Dear classmates, welcome back to the VSI testing class. This chapter is Boolean testing without full model. In the previous lecture, we talked about DFT, building self-test, test compression, and the memory testing. In this chapter, we will talk about functional testing, which is actually a very old test technique. So why are we learning functional test? Although functional test is an old technique, but it is still important because of three reasons. First, many circuits still rely on designers to manually generate test patterns. Second, functional test patterns can be applied as bit, so they are very important for delay defect testing. And third, functional testing helps to debug our design errors. Here we have a famous Chinese saying by Confucius. He said that when you see a worthy person, emulate him. When you see an unworthy person, examine your inner self. I think this is a very wide saying suitable for this chapter. So we should keep this wise saying in our mind when we study functional testing. This is the outline of this chapter. First, we will give a short introduction about functional testing and then we will show some techniques. In this video, we will talk about toggle test and design verification test. In the other videos, we will talk about exhaustive tests and the pseudo exhaustive tests. By the way, in this chapter, we will show many pictures of Professor McCluskey, who is the major contributor of this chapter. This table showed different test generation techniques in this video, we will talk about testing without full model. For combinational circuit, we can have toggle test, functional verification test, exhaustive test, pseudo exhaustive test. For sequential circuit, we will introduce checking experiment in the next video. This slide compare testing with and without four models. Testing without four model is sometimes called functional testing. We test the functionality of the circuit without any four model. Test patterns are typically generated by designer in a manual fashion, and the fault coverage is typically pretty low. But functional testing is very good because they can be applied at specific circuit speed. This is very useful to detect delay faults. Because the circuit is operated in normal mode, so the test power is the same as normal operation power. So we don't have to worry about the power issue when we use functional testing. And the functional testing is very useful for debugging. When there is anything wrong, we can easily identify the design error and uh, fix the problem. On the other hand, as the circuit gets larger and larger, structure testing becomes more and more important. When we apply structure tests, we test the structure of the circuit with specific four models such as stuck at fault. Structural test patterns can be generated automatically by ATPG and the fault coverage is typically very high. Unfortunately, because we need to use scan chain, so structural testing cannot be applied at fast speed. So the Test power is typically very high because we operate 
the circuit in a different way from the functional mode. Finally, if the circuit failed the structural test patterns, we actually don't know what is wrong. It's very hard to debug. So, in summary, both functional testing and structural testing has their advantage and the disadvantage. So actually, two tests complement each other. The camp of structural testing and the functional testing fight with each other for a long time. In very early age, when silicon was expensive and the DFT was not widely used, at that time, ATPG tool was not mature and the design was very simple. At that time, functional verification test was very popular. We can use designer to generate test patterns manually. However, as the technology keeps shrinking, silicon becomes not so expensive. The cost per transistor goes down dramatically. So DFT can become acceptable. And the ATPG test pattern generator was very mature. And the designs are becoming very, very complicated. So manual test generation has become infeasible. At that time, structural test with full model was the mainstream. However, as the technology keep shrinking to nanometer technology, delay defect has become more and more popular. To detect the delay defect, we require a speed testing. And the also, test power has become a serious problem. So people were trying to reduce the test power because of these reasons. Functional verification test has become popular again. So from this history, we can see that both functional tests and the structure tests are actually very important. They are both needed in production tests. Now, we will talk about the first Boolean test without full model, that is toggle test. The idea of toggle test is pretty simple. We just try to toggle every signal node as much as possible. The definition of toggle coverage can be like this. In the denominator, we have two times the total number of faults. In the numerator, we sum up all different number of values for each node. For example, in this simple circuit, we have totally nine different nodes. So in the denominator, we have 18. If we apply three patterns to this circuit, which are 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 0, 0, we can perform logic simulation and uh, we obtain different values for each node. For node K, we have two different values, 0 and 1. For node H, we have only one value which is zero totally we have 17 different values of each node divided by 18 so the toggle coverage is 94 percent so this is the first definition for toggle coverage which depends on the value of each node. On the other hand, we have a second 
Toggle coverage definition, which depends on the transition of each node. In this definition, the denominator is the same as before. However, in the numerator, we count the signal transition. For the same example circuit and the same test pattern, for signal A, we have a rising transition from 0 to 1. For signal B, we have a falling transition from 1 to 0. For signal C, we have a rising transition and we have a falling transition. In this way, we can count the number of transitions falling, we have rising, and we have falling here. Totally, we have 9 different transitions over 18, so the toggle coverage is 15% in this case. From this example, we can see that definition number 2 is actually more stringent than definition number 1. In summary, the toggle test is very easy to generate. The advantage of toggle coverage is it's very easy to obtain. We only need logic simulation. We don't need full simulation. And the test length is very short. However, toggle coverage is actually very pessimistic because we only care about full activation we don't worry about full propagation. So toggle coverage is actually an upper bound of single stack fault coverage or transition delay fault coverage. Now it's time for you to work on a quiz. Given this circuit of seven nodes and we apply three test patterns, one, one, zero, zero, and one, zero. Please calculate the toggle coverage. Please use the second definition, which is the transition. Now please pause the video and work on this quiz. Okay, have you finished yet? So we can fill in the logic values here. One, zero, zero, and we have zero, one, one here, and uh, one zero zero here so we have one 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 now we can count the transition we have two transition here one transition one transition one transition one transition here one transition here and the zero transition here totally we have one two three four, five, six, seven. We have seven transition over 14. So the toggle coverage is 50%. Have you got it correctly? Now let's move on to the design verification test. The purpose of design verification test is to establish a design has been correctly implemented a behavior specification. Design verification patterns are created by designers for verification purpose. They are good for design debugging, but they may not be good at detecting defects. Here is an example. This is a dual 4 to 1 multiplexer where X and W are the select signals. When x and w equal to 0, 0, we select a1 and a2. When x and w are equal to 0, 1, we select b1 and b2, and etc. Here we show a possible schematic to implement the dual 4 to 1 multiplexer. Now, if we use design verification patterns, we can use such a pattern 
of test lens 8. The first test pattern select A1 to D1 and A2 to D2 and the output R0. The second four pattern select A to D but now the output R1. These are very intuitive design verification patterns. They have 100% toggle coverage of the first definition, but their single stack F4 coverage is only 68%. Now we can change to ATG test patterns, where we also have the same test lens, eight test patterns. We have 100% toggle coverage. We also have 100% single stack F4 coverage. So the quality of ATPG test pattern is better than the define verification patterns. However, as we can see in this figure, there are many don't cares in this test pattern. And we actually don't know what is the purpose of this test pattern. So if this circuit failed the test, designer do not know how to fix the design. Now, if we want to improve our design verification patterns, we can actually add more design verification patterns. For example, for the same circuit, we can apply four test patterns to select A1 to D1 and A2 to D2 and outputs are all zero. And then we can apply the same four patterns but now A1 and A2 are one. So uh, F1 and F2 are one for the first pattern. The others are zero. Similarly, we can have B1 equal to 1, B2 equal to 1, and the C1 equal to 1, and the C2 equal to 1, and the D1 and D2. In this way, we totally have 20 test patterns to achieve 100% single stack F4 coverage. So the test length is much longer than ATPG test lens. In summary, in this video, we have shown functional testing without full model. The advantages are speed testing, low test power, and it helps the designer to debug design error. However, it takes a lot of effort to manually generate the test pattern. And the full coverage is typically very low and the test length is typically very long. We introduce toggle tests, which is very easy to evaluate. We have two definitions of toggle coverage, which can be depend on the value or the transition of each signal. We also introduce design verification tests where the test length can be long, but the full coverage can be low. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.